What's up, everybody? It is Doug. I'm here with Josh Rhodes. We're here for another episode of Pulling Trigger. Uh, Josh, you want to say what's up? Hey, everybody. What's going on today? I hope you all are having a good one. Hey, sorry. Uh, we took, I guess, a couple weeks off here, and uh, that's been my fault. I've been running around doing a bunch of things here. We also had the Trigger King season opening race and some other stuff kind of around that. And um, today we're going to talk about the J Concepts Regulator. Josh and I both have a lot of experience with them, and this is a fresh topic because uh, Josh raced two of them. I just raced one of them in the season opening Trigger King event, and the regulators are here now. And uh, I don't think on this show, we've talked a little bit about the retro class, but we haven't really talked about the regulator specific. Have we, Josh? Mm -hmm. No, I don't believe that we've completely talked about the regulator. We've talked about how when it debuted last season, how well it ran. Mm -hmm. But now we're getting ready to see what it can do in a full season. And man, I think they performed excellently out there on the track. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to get right into it because um, you have my number like I had. So I'm racing Chris Blank. Actually, he's got so many trucks, the orange trucks. I'm actually racing his regulator, his originator truck, and he's using the Shapeway parts. Uh, mm -hmm. He set that up for me. Chris is nice to set that truck up for me for the season. And um, it's got the Shapeway J Concepts knuckles and parts on it. It is a it's a very nice piece. Those knuckles are awesome. I can talk about that here in just a little bit. But uh, I drew Josh. Of course, I had the unfortunate uh, experience of getting to race you in the bracket and both of your regulators are on kill. And uh, yeah, you can talk about, I mean, you dominated in Bigfoot four, but the, even your digger truck, your digger too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, for some reason, and I, I was just talking about with, about this with Bob just a little bit ago, for some reason, it seems like that Bigfoot four truck of mine's got a little bit like maybe a half a mile per hour on some people out there. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know. The motors are actually old motors. They were in the old Bigfoot truck that I had previously. Mm -hmm. I move them over to this truck. I don't know. Maybe it's just they, they're worn in. We'll put it that way. But that truck just, it seems like it's got the giddy up and go on the straightaway to get around some people. And uh, I've, I've modified it too, to where it'll actually turn a little bit. It, it performed very well on that S course that we had. We had one really tight corner and one kind of long sweeping corner on that S course. And that truck, handled it superiorly um the the digger truck has the advantage in the turning as well i actually shaved it down it's got uh, maybe just a hair more steering throw than the bigfoot truck when i built it but it doesn't quite have the speed that's why i, I, I got a lot of a lot of people talking about oh digger two must have broke on the line or something whatever they're <laughs> racing in that final and i'm like no no digger two just it doesn't quite have this if it had the speed that truck would have definitely went on but uh, I want to go for the points championship in this big blue one right here. I think it's going to do pretty good. Yeah, and I, I say this as somebody who raced last year. And, and of course, I had my own regulator, um, too. I raced a regulator last season when they came on. And um, the uh, that Bigfoot 4 truck last season, probably, and I can say this because I wasn't in the points race, um, that's probably the points winner if that truck was in most of the time because you, like, flew up the standings. You, that It's just a good piece. The regulator's a good piece. And I, let's just start into it. Um, before we talk about our setups and sort of the regulator setup, let's just talk about the regulator. You know, why do people make a big deal about the J Concepts regulator? And I've got my reasons, but Josh, you want to start? This, this came out last year, last yeah, summer is when J Concepts released it. It came out last summer and the big selling factor to me was exactly where you could place the weight in the truck, uh, a clod buster. It has the option to throw a bunch of weight down there, but it's not necessarily as centered in that stock chassis as it is on this regulator chassis. That's one big advantage. The other big advantage is the way the behind the axle steering works. It's something that a lot of guys have tried to do over the years and have never really quite got it down until Fred Reap did with this steering setup that he has on the truck right now. I mean, a behind the axle kit like they have is something that's never been done that way before. Usually it's just a servo with kind of pointing straight down. This one's actually right in there behind the motor. It's down, it's angled. It gives you so much more throw if you set your truck up correctly. And it just, it just flat works. Yeah. The uh, Chris Blank, our, our buddy, you know, who I don't even know how many clods Chris has at this point. I forget. He could feel the whole, you know, 16 truck bracket. I feel like himself, but um, he's been around clods forever. I know he's, was just freaking with that, the steering. And even with me, you know, I've, I've got a lot of experience with clods that it's not that the chassis is so revolutionary so much. It's a extremely nice. It's awesome. That weight down it's low nice. is great too. The, but, the um, fact that the weight is extremely low also helps it pivot into corners a little bit better too. You can adjust like when I get on the brakes, I'm notorious for hitting the brakes and letting the rear end slide. And that's yep. exactly what this allows you to do. Yeah. And it, I guess what I mean by that is, um, 
it's an awesome chassis. It's an awesome performance chassis. But I guess my point with, you know, there have been other good performing chassis. The uh, the steering, though, is sort of revolutionary. It's, it's, it's so well engineered. I guess that's the thing. It's extremely well engineered. And I don't know anybody who has anything to say otherwise with the... Uh, the BTS or the, the BTA the behind the axle steering setup. It's just very, very well done. Yeah. And uh, I, mean, I talked about it on a big squid column at some point. I know I've written about it. Were you going to pull your truck out? Yeah, I was going to pull the truck up here so everybody could kind of see it. I mean, for a short wheelbase stock clod buster base truck like this, this much throw gets you around just about any corner that you can get through flawlessly, really. And the, I think the only reason that this truck really lost was because I didn't get out of a corner very well in the second bracket. But man, you can just see that much steering throw on a on a on a truck, a stock truck without rear steering, is astonishing to me. It's it's very protected too. The servos protected. That's the other thing too. Not only is it well engineered, it's yeah, it's extremely protected. protected. It's right in there behind the motor. It's not going to get hit, hurt, bent, or anything. Yep, and that kit does come. You showed it, but it comes with a rear steering lockout kit too. Yes, um, it's two wheel steer. You can kind of see the, the lockout kit right there in the back. Yep. Those rear tires ain't going anywhere. So, you know, in talking about that, the regulator, too, is a big deal because this is a major company, J Concepts, releasing an actual, like an old school style chassis for the clod to the, to the public. It used to be, to get any sort of, you know, a lot of clod chassis were like this. They weren't necessarily mass marketed. I mean, some of the Clodzilla stuff was back in the day, but... As far as like an actual company, you know, J Concepts, a big one, it'd be like a J Concepts or a Proline. Those are the two big boys as far as the aftermarket goes. And it's a box, it's a box solution for a killer clod buster to have it. And that, that's, you know, and it's machined very well. So that's one of the big, I guess that's kind of what the big fuss was about it, you know, the regulator. And I think, uh, Josh, as you were saying, because uh, it, it's expensive, it's an expensive chassis, but it is the best with the weight placement, especially you put the steering on it. Now you can run for you folks wanting to run four wheel steer. You can put another, uh, you can buy two of those steering kits. You can run, well, you don't have to buy two of the steering kits if you want. The, you can you can run whatever setup you want on it on the rear. Uh, you could have another aftermarket set, but you can run four wheel steer on it. You just need two of those setups. Yeah. And actually, and, uh, if anybody wants an example of how that's done, Dan Agosh actually did that with his Big Boss regulator that debuted at the last event as well. He's got rear steering on that truck. If you want to watch the bracket and kind of see how that truck worked. Well, so does the Originator truck that I'm driving. Yes. It has rear steer on it too. And so you, and I've, I've also raced the two wheel steer. I, I personally like having the four wheel steer just because I'm not as good like you, Josh, you've mastered that brake. I don't know what you'd even call it. Like the, when you, you get on the brakes and the, you slide the rear of the truck around power sliding it. Yeah. But it's just, it's a technique with the brakes and you do have to have your weight set up and you know, have to know how to drive it. And you're like a master of it. I like having the four wheel steer. I have mine turned down, man. I had it turned down to like 10% or something, 10 or 15%. I had to turn it up a little bit more, but um, I love that truck. I, I think it's awesome. It just sucks that I ran into you like immediately. So I got put on the trailer and uh, I knew I'd hear about it on this show when we were doing it. I was like, oh, boy, I'm going to hear it from Josh like right away. I mean, I'm uh, not I'm not going to brag about anything at all of a truck that you saw in the mirror. But. <laughs> that wasn't that truck more so. I think I did race that one and lose, but it was uh, your digger truck. I lost I mean, it this, this one, too. I'll just throw that one up. And no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I lost the digger twice. Uh, impressive, though, that you, you know, you brought that truck out and it was great. In general, though, the, the regulators, I think this year they're just, I think they're going to be all over the place podium wise now that um, they're actually out there and people kind of got the setups. I know. So the originator truck has closed cell foams and that's amazing. I need to do that on all of mine. Um, those closed cell foams really let those tires, the, the golden years, I guess that's, that's what I'm using. You use, are you, well, you're using firestorms on digger, right? Because no, I've actually got golden years all the way around now. Okay, the, other, the old digger truck that I had had firestorms. Okay. Okay. I wasn't, I, Forget looking at that. I don't know why I thought it was fire. But we've got two different philosophies on the compounds. You're you're running the the gold, or excuse me, you're running the blue compound, correct? Correct. Blues with closed cell crawler innovations, closed cell foams. Yep. I have gold compound tires on with no foams. Interesting. I didn't know that you were running uh, 
in the foot truck, you were running on the dirt, you were running golds. Yeah, I'm running both trucks on the gold compounds with no foams, and I drilled out the uh, the breather holes in the back of the rim by, uh, I forget what it is, I think it's a half on uh, the drill bit that I used just to open it up and allow it to help soak up that suspension and landing. The closed cell foams like setup that you have works just as good. I don't know. I mean, the blues are set up to have a ton of grip and uh, mm -hmm. the very first bracket that I ran this truck in last year, we did that down and back style. I think it was Tampa 92 or something like that. Yeah. Where the turning remember, pole, you had to do yes. like the, the barrel. Yeah. Yes. The barrel I remember I raced Chris and that, and his brand new regulator at that point. And I, I watched that race back and I didn't know until I watched the race back that he actually pulled a wheel stand with the truck a la Master of Disaster and end over ended over the first jump. And I just took off and left him. So I think that these actually provide a better amount of grip on the dirt because they allow you to be able to pin it and slide around corners and stuff. Whereas that blue compound, you've got to slow down. Yes, you're going to have a lot of mid corner speed and exit with it, but I'm going to have just as much on exit, I believe, with just doing the brake torque method that I've always done. I mean, it's, I don't know how anyone that races with us could argue with the results. I mean, if this is a results based business, racing in general, you seem to be doing pretty well with the golds. <laughs> I, I didn't know that though. I thought you were running blues. So that's, that's um, new to me. And you ran those golds, I think, on about what you could argue. That's probably about as bad a track condition as we're going to run on in trigger king last time so when we raced for those of you in the back you know just so you guys know if you've been watching our videos that we're posting of the um our first event as of the recording of this everything has been up at least the first bracket and we're going to put the the other videos of the freestyle and the second brackets up but if you notice the wind in those videos uh it was i mean it was borderline that day that was a very chilly day outside yes, and it, it has rained a ton the night before and so we were yeah, actually I mean, worried I, we were going to be able to to race what josh i showed up to john's the day beforehand long before the rain showed up and that track that he had prepared for us was absolutely perfect mm -hmm. we all went out to eat and no sooner did we sit down in that restaurant than it just completely downpoured on us and when we walked back out of the restaurant got back to his house i just kind of shook my head i was like man that's that's it's going to be tough tomorrow to make sure this track is race ready and eventually we did get it race ready but uh, one lane was certainly a little bit rougher than the other lane, at least my opinion on it. Yeah, we had one lane that was a little bit better. And also, we will normally, we'll, we'll water the track in between racing sessions. So how we do it in Trigger King, just because we have so many trucks normally to run through, we don't water between rounds, but we will water the track in between each class. Like Before each class, yes. Um, but what we did here, because the track was so wet in the morning, and it was cold and everything. We didn't get the hoses out. So we just figured, okay, we're just going to run it as it was because it was packed in pretty tight. And it, it wasn't super dusty that day, but the track was very slick. So it, it wound up by the end of the day, it could have used water, but we just figured, okay, we're just going to keep running it as such. Because we had already started an hour and a half late to let the track dry. We had to get a tractor on it. I mean, it was soaked in the morning, certain areas. And it was wonderful that John and everybody did it to where we could even race. So uh, but normally the surface, we would have more watered. So my whole point to this is your golds gripped well. I mean, your truck seemed like it gripped well. And that's as slick as we're ever going to race on the dirt. Normally, yeah. it would be watered more. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if I was to throw blue compounds on that Bigfoot truck, it would be power wheeling mm -hmm. right straight off the line out there. on the, Even on slick dirt, I think it would do that. The tr it just it hooks up very well. I don't think I'm spinning those tires as much when I'm getting on the exit of a corner. And it's kind of an old school style method because a lot of guys back in the day even on their Pro Mod trucks would take a uh, IMEX Polar tire is what we used to call it. But they were really called road dogs. And they would do a similar thing where they would have no foam inside the tire and they would drill out the back of the rim. So that's kind of what I've got going on right here with this truck. Some guys were using that when we started Trigger King. I remember Chris Kalen and his old trucks. If you watch some of the old videos, we have the yeah. War Wizard truck. Yeah, he would. Uh, he had that. Yeah, I used to run them too. Uh, my my first uh, Excalibur truck that I had had them on there. The old the old old Grave Digger had them on there. They were the tire of choice at the time. There was no nothing out there from J Concepts, nothing out there from Proline to go through. You either had you had very slim tire options than what you do now. And in fact, you definitely didn't have compound options. Yeah, you didn't have that at all. It was you'd be happy with what you got. Um, so how are your trucks set up, Josh, shock-wise? 
Shockwise, I've got G made. Uh, I can't remember. I've always mispronounced the last portion of it. Ari Ariatron or something like that. I can't remember. I'd have to look at the 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 post where I bought it just to be able to spell the like, talk out the last part of the the name of it. But I can show a close up of them. But these are G made shocks. And what's really cool about these is these are very inexpensive shocks that are on this truck. But you can kind of see it's got its own little valve right here on top. If you want to set your set your shock up, they come with instructions, which is really nice. You can do a low pressure setup or a high pressure setup on your shock, and they are very simple to follow. And I think bigger companies should take note of what GMate is doing by sending those instructions out on how to build their shocks. Because beforehand, when I was building, because I had Proline shocks previously, Power Stroke shocks on this on the old Bigfoot truck. And when I was looking for new shocks, these got recommended to me. And when I got them, I was actually astonished by how much was in there for me, be, me to be able to just look at and go straight out of the box with. Because with the Proline shocks, they don't send you instructions. They just send you shocks. They don't yeah. tell you how to build them. Yep. I've had those Proline shocks on other trucks before. Not yeah. on a retro, but yeah, you're, you're just kind of just the shocks. Yeah. You have to basically look up on YouTube or look up at different forum posts exactly how to build those shocks. And that took me quite a little while to get them dialed in on my trucks. The G-Made shocks, like I said, they come with the instructions right out of the box. You want to run a high pressure setup, they've got the instructions on how to build it right there. Directly next to it is a low pressure setup. I'm currently on a low pressure setup with these things. They work very well. The truck has a nice, probably non-retro style suspension because it just... It soaks up on just about every landing. You can see in this last video that we did where the truck launches, I kind of come down on the right rear. It's in the race against um, Cluster Truck in the mm -hmm. semifinals, I think it was. Truck lands, comes down on the right rear, and the truck just soaks every bit of it up into the next jump. Okay. Yeah, they, and they seem to be working awesome. Again, it's hard to, hard to argue. And I, for you folks out there who... I suppose, you know, most of the people that are buying regulators are probably racers just because the price of admission is pretty high mm -hmm. and they're a race chassis, but actually, no, I shouldn't say, cause I do know some friends who want just a really nice retro clod and they don't race, but they do have the regulators. So I guess my whole point in saying that is if you're wanting to know a race winning setup, um, Josh has been doing very well in the club with uh, especially that Bigfoot four, I'm sure digger two. Well, digger two had a great showing. Yeah. It's just that four had a better one. And, Four four had a better one just because I think it like I said it's got like maybe a half a mile per hour faster. I don't know what's what the difference is in the motors. No idea. It's the same electronics throughout both trucks. Same battery, same speed control, same motor. But for some reason, it just seems like this Bigfoot truck has just a little bit more top end than Digger. Uh, the Digger truck, though, like I said, it's got a little bit of advantage in cornering, and I think that's what really helped it in that first bracket. Uh, both times I've debuted a regulator, this truck won in its first run. Digger got to a final, and honestly, if my truck hadn't have been racing my other truck, Digger probably would have got the win in that one. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one thing, too, to talk about, so Jake Concepts, they offer Shapeways parts yes. for these. To, I mean, you can, they're not just for the regulator, I suppose. You could run them on a, a regular Claude, too, but they have basically a full setup for the, the axles and everything, and especially as it pertains to this, the knuckles. I wanted to talk about. So they have like um, steering knuckles that have really nice clearance and I am running those currently. They're expensive. The shape waist parts are expensive, but uh, those knuckles are awesome. They're like a high travel knuckle. It, again, engineered really well. That, you know, you probably don't need to do those unless you are racing just because, unless, I mean, the pro it's just expensive. So I guess it's just money, right? If you want to spend the money, they're worth the money. I think they're worth the money. They're worth the money, but I also, I mean, just take a Dremel and shave down your stock parts. You can do the same thing. The issue with doing what I have done, though, with shaving down the stock parts is the fact that you are weakening those parts. Yes. The shape the stuff integrity. is coming out, and it's strong just the way that it is. Yeah, and I suppose the counterpoint to that is who cares? The knuckles are cheap, <laughs> if, I suppose, if you want to if you want to do it. But, yes, you do. You're structurally weakening them by lopping off or not lopping off, but trimming out the uh the plastic that those are made out of but so there are different options for that but you do want to do something with the knuckles you probably don't want to run just standard full knuckles if you're going to spend the money on a regulator you should just be able to be comfortable with a dremel or something else i think to to get yeah, to, yeah and uh, you, sh you should be yeah. like that I've, I've always done that i've like every clodbuster i've ever owned whether it's pro mod sport mod 
or retro has had shaved knuckles on it. So it'll allow you to get more steering throw. And you get considerable yeah. amount more. I know it doesn't seem like it travels more, but with that big tire on it, there's, I mean, it's a big difference. It's a big I difference. Wish I, I wish I had an example of a shaved one up here, but um, you shave the inside of the knuckle mm -hmm. and you shave the two, the two top, like there's two little ears on top of the knuckle that kind of prevent it and lock into your axle tube. Yep. You'll shave those off as well. So it'll glide right underneath with those little spots where it's meant to grab. And uh, you get a little bit, you get a lot more throw actually out of it. Yeah. And the advantage too here, I guess the last kind of subject with the regulator. So that steering kit has the two wheel steer. And so it, it, it eliminates four wheel steer. Now I know that I like having four wheel steer just because we run some really tight layouts, but you don't have to use the four wheel steer. And as Josh says, or shows, you can run two wheel steer and be competitive, especially on the regulator. If you know how to turn with it and you do those knuckle mods, or if you buy different knuckles to shape ways ones to get more throw the four wheel steer, the big disadvantage of it is it just, I mean, you can turn it down on a radio. Most of us have a way to program it down. I run like 15% to maybe 20, 25, depending on the layout. But still, versus a truck with a locked rear, the, the locked rear truck is always going to just move truer and straighter. And a lot of races can be lost to four-wheel steer when you start snaking. Mm -hmm. And even if you have the the uh, the rear programmed out, the fact that you have a, a loose rear end, when you come off a jump or something, just the shock of it, unless you use a really strong servo, is going to cause servo drift or servo move. Now it might come back to the home position quick, but in a race, which is what we're doing here, that small kick of the rear can throw you off. Yeah, so that's a big, especially in a short a wheelbase one. configuration. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing to point out, though, it means we're talking about wheelbase, we're talking about the rear steer and everything. Chris Parrish has a regulator this year on his barefoot truck, and it's noticeably longer than a stock regulator travis sutton's come out with a way to extend that wheelbase out and his truck performed pretty well too with a longer wheelbase setup on the regulator that was my big critique of the regulator and i know why they developed it at the short wheelbase like that because it's an 11 inch wheelbase i think it's slightly over stock clod but it's not what we would call a long wheelbase which is you know around 12 inches that's that'd be what's classified long i know some guys run one inch over stock so i think you're like what 11 six or something but normally mm -hmm. To fit a body, you're talking like 12, 12, 3, something like that, 12.3. That's like a long wheelbase. I like running longer wheelbases, and that was, I guess, my critique of that, of the, the regulator. The one is, okay, you're you're locked into a short wheelbase, but Travis Sutton, Sutton Motorsports and Machine, did develop this, and Chris Parrish, the barefoot truck, is running it. And I hadn't really even gotten a good look at it yet to really see what's up, but I, it's really smart that uh, somebody did that to elongate the wheelbase. Yeah, I agree. And like I said, the truck ran pretty well for uh, Chris's first time out with it. It looked honestly, I didn't even notice that it was a regulator until he told me it was a regulator with a longer wheelbase. It I didn't looked, know it was either. From a distance, I, it looked just like his actual truck that he ran the season before. Yeah, that's in. Had I have known at the time, I would have taken pictures or something of it, but it, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. Again, I thought that that was his long wheelbase, not long wheelbase like it's purposefully long i guess like it, it draws attention it's not like uh, ross and the texas toy truck that he's got which that's a long wheelbase this truck is it's long for a regulator and again i didn't even know it was a regulator same thing i i would have happily taken pictures of it but i had no clue till after the event mm -hmm. and travis wasn't there so i didn't even you know i didn't get, didn't get to talk to travis about it either so yeah check out um you want to check out chris's truck at some point we'll have a, a feature on it I should say, too, that last race, Josh and I did mean to record some episodes like truck overviews. The problem was with the, well, it was freezing cold that day with a very windy, wind, as you guys can see in the videos. And with trying to get the track ready and then being behind and all kinds of stuff going on, uh, that just wasn't going to happen that day. But I'm hoping that, what, a week from now we have our next race? Something like that, yeah. I'm hoping that you and I have some time to do some truck overviews. What we wanted to do was we did like some back in the day, I used to do some trigger King tech and have some people talk about their trucks, something like that. Although um, it'll be a version of this, like the pull and trigger show, just, it might not be live, but it'll be kind of live where Josh and I are talking at the race. We hope to do some of that just last time with the weather and everything. It, I, I don't know about you, Josh, but for me, it was so cold and with that wind that it really affected my driving because my hands yeah, cold. 
and yeah, to try it, and it, it, that for me later in like the second bracket mm-hmm. my my right hand just leaving it out there for too long and your fingers get cold really fast when you're doing that you, you probably see me with the radio sticking out of one pocket of my hoodie and both my hands inside of there just clenched in fists like this try to keep my fingers warm for the round yeah i was on the computer as i am most of the day i'm on the computer so i i'm like typing stuff so my hands are I guess exposed. And again, this sounds like, okay, you know, what are you guys talking about? Who cares? But we're literally driving with the radios and these races are how long? 15 seconds, 20 seconds. It doesn't, you don't have time to really get acclimated much unless you go deep in the bracket. Like once you get deep in the bracket, you're kind of warmed up, but those first races are brutal when your hands are cold and you're not used to the trucks. And especially this last race, I mean, I was running, I had my retro clods, you know, I had a regulator. I had a long wheelbase Sutton chassis clod. I was running one of Bob's mod clods. I had two Havoc chassis trucks. I had an SMT-10 and a Lozy LMT. And all of these trucks handle totally different than each other. And yeah. you can kind of see, too, throughout the bracket, some people not really adjusting to the, the different style of trucks that they were racing in. I did really good in retro. I wasn't that good in sport mod. I wasn't that good in the LMT class and pro mod. I did okay with it in the second bracket, but the first bracket I was out in round one with both trucks. It was tough. Uh, that's the first time I've ever been in a race where I've really felt like, man, these trucks all feel so different than each other that it was with, with us not really having much practice or anything in between. It's just tough. And the only way to really get practice is to go rounds and, if you draw another guy who's really good off the bat and they're going through the same thing, you're on the trailer before you've even known what's going on. And yeah, I remember I was really you know what frustrated. You got. Huh? You're on the trailer before you know what you have. I know. And you know, I was, it's funny. I don't really get frustrated at races. I mean, I guess it's not like I'm stomping around or anything, but I spent a bunch of time on this past season going through my sport mod trucks, my banana, my rotten apple too, and the boss and all these trucks getting them ready. And I felt I had great passes in the trucks but I just got straight up whooped. And like you, Josh, I had, um, you know, that regulator was set up awesome. You were just faster. It was just one of those days. Everybody's getting so fast in the club that you just get your head taken off so quick. It doesn't matter if you run well anymore. It used to be, it feels like if you made a good pass, you're probably going to win until you get maybe later in the bracket anymore. You have to make a fast pass. You can't just make a good clean pass. Yeah, I hear you. Um, unlike, like I've said a few times before, I got told this years ago when I first started doing sim racing of all things, a guy is much more scared of a somebody that's going to go out and cut fast, consistent lap times than somebody that's going to go out and hot lap. Mm-hmm. That's so true in monster trucks because the more consistent you are in monster trucks, the better you are in monster trucks. That's why you see guys like Todd LeDuc doing so well in monster jam guys like Adam and Ryan Anderson doing so well. They're deadly consistent and that throws people off, believe it or not. It does because it, and even I see this in radio control, you know, any kind of racing, but especially the monster trucks where the, uh, the rounds are so short, but there is off-road aspects, like unlike a drag race, you know, where the cars are on the road, is that the consistent guys, and we talked about this in our racing episode, that the consistent guys are scarier to race against because you know, you know, in the other lane, they're going to probably have a consistent pass that's probably decent speed. So it you have to, it uh, tricks you to try and go faster than maybe you can run. And you have the really fast guys like Michael aren't finally, and he watches this show. What's up, Michael. He always will message. And thanks for the shout out. Um, Michael was at our, this is the first race he was at. Was it ever? I don't know if he was at John's track at all last year. No, he wasn't at John's last year at all. This was his first race in a little while. And he go out and whoops our butts and sport mods. Yeah. He with that nightlife three truck and uh, all of his trucks are running well. It's just that, he um in sport mod he's he he was really good that day and i could tell he was shaking off rust too but he's one of the best examples of the fast consistent guy to where michael never looks like he's really running that fast you know he's not hitting the jumps all crazy or uh skying out certain things but he's like deadly fast it's the assassin fast and Mm -hmm. you know and i just use him as an example but anymore we have so many guys that are like that that's just that's how it is which is fun to race so um, I guess with that, I'm gonna. I guess we can kind of wrap this up. Did you have anything else to add on the regulator, Josh? Man, not too much. I mean, we pretty pretty pretty, pretty well covered it out here. Um, 
the truck just works flat, plain and simple. It's something that I'm extremely proud to own. And I'm really glad J concepts came out with it. And I think a lot of people are really happy that Jason Rona accidentally ran into a battery at a trigger King race and thought that they needed to move that steering back. Yeah. So it's so funny because I remember that. And I, I take, you know, there's one thing I, I think with trigger King, it's kind of fun for two things with the regulator. Cause that steering, I remember when he smacked that battery and screwed himself up and we can thank that for the BTA steering this this awesome steering and also our weight rule i know is one of the reasons they put that brass weight in the bottom of it which even if your club doesn't have a weight rule i think you're crazy to not put that weight in it yeah i agree 100 percent. you need that weight down there on the bottom if you don't you've just got basically i believe it's a fiberglass chassis don't get me wrong i might i might be wrong but uh the truck is just so lightweight without that it would skate and that when you have that brass plate it's a heavy brass plate Yes. In the bottom of it. It's thick brass. I mean, it's substantial. And that plants your truck. And I think that's where that's what's so special and gets all that weight down low. Because if if that wasn't there, it's not that the truck would necessarily be a high have a high center of gravity. It almost it almost really wouldn't have much of a center of gravity, if that makes sense. Like the whole thing is so light that um, it wouldn't be pressed like in the cradle. As it is now, that cradle is where the weight is. And it really, when that truck lands, it helps to settle it to have all that weight so low. Yeah, it certainly does. And if you don't believe me, go out and watch some of the racing that we saw in the last bracket for retro racing with Trigger King. There were a few launches that my trucks had where the truck went nose high up in the air, but came down, landed perfectly and settled into the next jump, just like it was supposed to. Other trucks, not so lucky. Yeah. And I, okay. That's one last real quick thing. So on that weight, you know, a lot of the other aftermarket chassis, the weight is not down low. The weight is everywhere because they're aluminum plate chassis. Yes. And they could be thick aluminum plate or um, steel. The one, you know, behind me here, the Sutton chassis, that one, I actually, I forget what Travis, if that was steel, it's a heavy chassis though. I know that he machined out and it's thick, but I guess my whole point is the weight isn't necessarily low because the weight is distributed over the whole machine chassis Yes, to where that J concepts one, the chassis itself, um, whatever material that is, is super, super light. The machine, super, it, it, it's crazy light. So you don't have aluminum plates. You don't have steel plates or metal plates. So that brass weight is the weight of the chassis and it's down super low in the cradle and it makes a truck that settles fast. It's fast in the corners. That's the secret sauce is that brass weight. Yeah. And I can attest to it. I've had several different retro chassis since we started Trigger King. Uh, the latest one that I had before the regulator was a CC1 from Southwest Monster Shop. They actually had the battery tray in the very front of the truck. It was located up here in the chassis. So basically, that would help keep your front end going down, so you're basically kind of jumping like that over jumps. And don't get me wrong. It helps, but it, I always felt like that truck was just... I'll put it to you this way. It felt like the weight was getting slung in different directions that it shouldn't have been, which made it look cool retro wise. Cause it's a retro truck and you're bouncing all over the place race wise though. It didn't really do what I wanted it to do out on the racetrack as much as the regulator truck did. And I'm not throwing that chassis in the bus. It's an awesome chassis. Just get the weight centered in it correctly. I think it's just as competitive out there. That's but what the Danny regulator just worked very well for me. Cluster truck is that chassis, correct? Yes. Cluster trucks, that chassis. Yeah, and it, Danny runs great with it. Again, I think it's just cool that we have this many awesome retro chassis that are out there now because finally all that race technology is filtered down to the retro trucks. Exactly. And I know some people complain about this, that even the regulator, some people complain that, oh, it's this lightweight, super racing chassis. Here's my thing. If guys are going to race, you're going to have technology. It's just the way it is. If you don't want that, don't race, or at least don't race competitively. I'll say this. Don't be Everett Jasmine. <laughs> you're not going to get any arguments from me from that. Yeah. The, you just, there's going to be progress. There's going to be technology. And um, again, you know, Jason, J concepts, what's cool with him and Fred, I know Fred had a huge part in this was that they're huge racers, but also huge monster truck people too. So I think that's where you get the regulators, the best of both worlds for me, it's high tech, but it feels monster truck to me. And um, I guess the final thing is that regulator feels like it was a passion project because it was. I yes. can't imagine there's much money in them. Let's be straight here. There's, I mean, maybe more so than there used to be. But um, I think it's great that that kind of a aftermarket item exists now. I mean, 10 years ago, it was unthinkable. 
Yeah, I mean, you're 100% correct there. Ten years ago, it was stock clod chassis or a metal chassis that someone would machine themselves and run out there. We were lucky enough to have sick and me chassis for a long time in the series, be the dominant chassis. Then this thing comes along, and it's, it's literally, to me, it's like Bigfoot 4 in the late 80s. The truck, this comes along, now everybody else is chasing it. It feels like that's what it's going to be, and as someone who's driven one, too, and I, I hope I'm, I, I look to be competitive, I think, this season in an originator truck. It's, um, it's a nice chassis. They're just, they're great. They're great. I don't know what else to say. The J-Cons, it's regulated. It's a great chassis. And they're, yeah, we could have had this whole show basically be yes, come on here and say, yep, it's great. Bye, everybody. Hopefully, though, <laughs> you know, hopefully this helped explain it, though, to you guys who are watching this that wonder, why would I spend that money? Or why do we think it's great? I hope you would understand that we're not doing this to cheerlead. Yeah, we're not doing the cheerlead. Uh, I will say, and this is something that I, I meant to say at the beginning of the show, um, my regulators are literally my favorite trucks to drive right now. They handle so well. They do exactly what you want them to do. That's why I love the truck so much, and that's why I'll continue to praise it. There you go. Well, Josh, um, I'll plug something first, I guess. Guys, BigSquidRC.com every week, Monster Truck Madness column. Uh, next couple of weeks, I'm talking LMT stuff. We're going to have a show on here probably after this next race because our next race is next weekend, 17th, I think, 17th or 18th. I forget which day. But um, Josh and I are making some changes to our LMTs, uh, the diff oil. We we won't talk about it here, but after that race, I think we need to do – we'll have a couple races of the LMTs under our belt. We will have made some changes, use different tires. I think we'll have enough to talk about some things. I know people on this channel have asked, can you guys talk about – lmt race setups well we haven't had the reps on them but i think after next one we will yeah i agree with you 100 uh, percent also if you guys want to follow along of course my podcast retro monster truck review this week we've got ryan lacoste on the show gonna be talking chicago amphitheater 1987 day number three and 87 the or 89 uh excuse me 89 okay sorry yes. you caught me you caught me there it was 89 uh, Ryan was actually at one of those shows and he's, it's funny at the beginning of the episode, he's like showing me pictures and I'm like, dude, we're audio. <laughs> but, uh, the following week though, is one that I really want you guys to pay attention to. It's me and Cody Saucier, former driver of monster energy. Uh, we're going to be actually talking Memphis, 1991, one of the early Penda events. You had the USA, USHRA and TNT points champions there. And a lot of things, a thing that people overlook is the fact that all three TNT points champions were at that event as well. And Cody's a good dude. Uh, he's, yes, um, he is. I, there's, I don't know if I've ever heard anybody speak anything ill of Cody. He's one of the hardest working guys in monster trucks, championship crew chief. He can, he can do it all. And championship both. crew chief, definitely a championship caliber driver. Oh yeah. He's, he's an amazing right driver. <laughs> he knows exactly what he's doing behind the wheel and he knows how to wrench on the trucks as well. The man just, he knows everything about the sport and that's why I invited him on the show and he was gracious enough to come on and give me some time out of his busy schedule. And it's a, it's a really fun conversation and that one I can't wait to share with everybody. Also, before we get out of here, uh, yesterday, if you haven't had a chance, I did upload a special edition of the Retro Monster Truck Review. I had an interview come back to me after about 10 years that I did. I didn't even know that existed anymore, but, uh, about 10 years ago, I interviewed Dennis Anderson, and now that is up and available for download as well. And it's one of one of my most favorite things that I've ever done in the monster truck industry. I hope uh, I need to listen to that. I'm a, I actually have a drive after this tonight. I'm going to be driving for a little while. I hope to listen to that. And um, I still I'm the biggest fan of that podcast. I know I've been on it a couple times now, but I love listening to it because I learn just little things of history. And I can't wait to listen to Ryan and and um, especially Cody, who's you know, it's like the, the end all be all kind of monster truck. Yeah, both, guy, both of those guys are gurus when it comes to old school monster truck racing. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, and I love that, that so many people appreciate the history. I, hopefully you can get the Andersons on sometime, especially I know Adam is such a, uh, he's a big fan of monster truck history and knows everything. So hopefully uh, love well, if you get on there. Hey, Adam, if you're listening, come on the show with me. We can find <laughs> something to talk about. I'd you have to, to find a good event. Too. If you get him, you've got to find a really good, uh, good digger event. Yeah, I definitely do. So, all right, guys. Well, hey, um, I want to thank you all very much for, you know, for this. Check me out, BigSquidRC.com and the Monster Truck guy over there, Monster Truck Madness. Josh just went through all of his stuff. Um, check Josh out. Uh, sorry for being delayed on this show. I, I'm not going to say we're going to do it every week at this point, but we're going to do it. We're going to do it frequently. As, as often frequently. as possible. Yes, as frequently as we can. So uh, thank you guys very much for watching, and um, we will see you soon.
Cheers.